Good morning, everyone. How are you all doing? Hopefully, everybody's doing well this morning. Uh, but if you, before we start, uh, why don't we pray? Lord, Ray, uh, thank you for just all things that you do for us. And how you guide us. Uh, and how you protect us. May you continue to protect all of us, uh, not just physically, health-wise, but more importantly, help us to be protected spiritually. I pray today that uh, we'll be able to learn what it really means to, to walk in truth, to walk in love. And now we're supposed to really get into your word, to fall in love with you, to study your word, to understand that you desire for us to, to get to know you and to grow in you. So Father, uh, teach us through this passage and help us to learn and I'll help us to apply and to make it practical. In your son's name we pray, amen. The passage for this morning is first, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. So if you have your Bibles open, please open up to 1 Timothy chapter 1, uh, verses 1 through 6. And this is what it says. The other to the elect lady and her children, whom I love in truth, and not only I, but also all who know the truth, because of the truth that abides in us and will be with us forever. Grace and mercy and peace be with, uh, with us. From God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Father's Son, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as we were walk, as we were commanded by the Father. And now I ask you, dear lady, not as though I were writing a new a commandment, but the one we have had from the beginning, that, that we love one another. And this is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is a commandment, just as you have heard from the beginning, so that you, would, that you should walk in it. Second John is one of the shortest books. and could have been written on a papyrus of standard size of five by nine. In Second John, John addresses a very important question. What should I do about false teaching? And to answer that question, John deals with two major subjects. Truth when it comes to teaching and love when it comes to his relationship with the recipient. Truth and love I frequently mention in a society, but, is in, but it is seldom practiced. John's concern was for the people to remain faithful to the truth. We are to remain faithful to the truth. And we have heard the term, truth shall set you free. The origin, origin of this saying can be found in John 8, 32. And it says, and you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And let's read it in context in John chapter 8, verses 31 through 36. It says, so Jesus said to the Jews who have believed him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. They answered him, we are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you, you say that you will become free? Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. It states that all those who sin are slaves to that sin. By accepting the truth of God's word through Jesus, his son, believers can be free from sin. In short, the text states that by following the teachings of Christ, one can move beyond sinful ways. The truth shall set you free. The truth will set you free. Believers know that to knows the truth as it has been taught to us. And John acknowledges that truth is not just an abstract concept or virtue. The truth is a person and he lives in everyone who believes in Jesus Christ. John himself wrote in the Gospel of John in 14.6, John 14.6, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. Again, John is concerned that his reader, 
remain faithful to the truth. So how are we to remain faithful to the truth? To walk to the truth. First way is to walk in truth. To walk in truth. And it comes in verses 1 through 4. It says, The elder to the elect lady and her children, whom I love in truth, and not only I, but also all who know the truth, because of the truth that abides in us and will be with us forever. Grace and mercy and peace will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Father's Son, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as we were commanded by the Father. The elder here is John, and being the last surviving apostle, the reader or readers would know who was the elder. The reader is someone he calls the elect lady. It most, it most signifies that the lady is a church and her children are other members of the church. What is important to us today is he is writing to believers in this letter. The church, believers have been confronted with false teachers, false teachings, and if not careful, it will be swayed by that we will be swayed by false teachers and their teaching. John is concerned about their relationship with the truth. Truth is mentioned five times in the first four verses. See, John, one, John's love for the elect lady and her children. Two, believes of the other believers. Three, Christ and all believers. Four, Christ's relationship with those he dwells. And number five, other children, John reminds them to know the truth about Jesus and live according to it. See, it is important to know how much John loves them and how much other believers love them. It comes from a sincere heart where, we, where he is concerned because false teaching has crept into the church. So we are to understand Jesus' relationship to believers is the essence of truth. His presence in us through the Holy Spirit convicts us about the actions we contemplate and do. Truth in this sense also has a connotation of straight. Jesus as, as well is true if it is straight and leveled. We are walking true if we are consistent with the teachings and the ways of Jesus. Walking in truth simply means to order one's life according to the word of God. Walking in truth simply means to order one's life according to the word of God. We receive his word. We become doers of his word. We continue in his word. We seek to walk in ways that God has laid out in his word. Our life will be in tune with God. See, John is also encouraged that some have not swayed from the truth. However, the point of the letter is that the danger is very present. If some are walking in truth, then some are not. The question for us today is, are we walking in truth? Are we walking in truth? Verse 3 says, grace and mercy and peace will be with us. From God the Father and from Jesus Christ the Father, Son, and truth and love. This verse gives us the assurance that God's blessings of grace, mercy, and peace will be with those who walk in truth. As we walk in truth, we experience grace. We experience mercy. We experience peace. So what is grace? What is grace? What is mercy? What is peace? Grace is the love and favor shown by God to us. Mercy is God's faithfulness and his relationship to us. Peace is the sum total of the blessings given by God and his grace and mercy. Again, grace is the love and favor shown by God to us. Mercy is God's faithfulness and his relationship to us. 
Peace is the sum total of the blessing given by God and his grace and mercy. So when we walk in truth, we experience all three. We are to order our lives according to the word of God. See, I ask this simple question, but convicting, or with conviction. When was the last time where we really prayed to God, read his word, and meditated on it? And I don't mean Bible studies. I don't mean service times. It is only when we are one-on-one with God. When we're spending this intimate time with God. When was the last time when we intimately spent time with God? Read his word, studied it, meditated on it. See, only we can, only you can answer this question. And hopefully that we will be answering this question honestly. Because if we do not make it a practice to study his word, to pray, to read his word, to meditate on it on a daily basis, to walk in truth becomes near impossible. Very, very difficult. When we become more distant from God, Harder to know what is truth and what are lies. That's when we start compromising. It is not God who grows distant from us. Rather, it is us who grow distant from God. It is not God who grows distant from us. Rather, it is us who grow distant from God. It's my encouragement to to you is to make Christ a priority in your life. To read, to pray, to meditate, to spend time with him on a daily basis, to be intimate with him each and every day. To set a time, to stick with that time, and don't compromise that time for anything. In verse four, it says, Rejoice greatly to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as we were commanded by the Father. In verse 4, he commends some and commands all to walk in God's truth. The elder John was greatly rejoiced that some were walking in the truth. To walk in the truth is to be obedient to the truth God has made known. God, John wanted the whole church to walk in truth together. In order, in other words, God wants his children to learn how to live doctrinally correct lives. Doctrinally meaning Christ teaching. To live doctrinally in Christ teaching to, correct, to live correctly. Walking was used to describe a person's life and behavior. And to live in the truth means to live in accordance with God's revelations and the standards it contains. And one of the saddest and troublesome trends in churches is that there are so many who go to church, have attended church, fellowships, who do not continue in the truth. It is so important for older believers to set that example to the younger generation to walking in the truth. Not to compromise even a little bit. To walk with integrity, morally, ethically, and honestly. It is best to ask ourselves, are we good examples so that we do not hinder hinder others in walking in the truth? And to ask ourselves, are we walking in the truth? How are we to to remain faithful to the truth, walk in truth? Second, we are to walk in love. 
we are to walk in love. It comes in verses 5 and 6, and it says, and, and now I ask you, dear lady, not as though I were writing you a new commandment, but the one we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love, that we walk, walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, just as you have heard from the beginning, so that you should walk in it. The command to love one another is a reoccurring theme in the scriptures. Why? Because God is love. And when we love, we're most like him. Life without love is life that is worthless. Life that is without love is a life that is worthless. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 3, it says, If I give away all I have, and if I deliver, the, deliver of my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. We are to learn to love God and others. Mother Teresa once said, it's not what you do, but how much you love, how much love you put into it. It's not what you do, but how much love you put into it. Life minus love equals zero. We can, we can show love by caring for people, by accepting, listening, helping, giving, serving, and spending time with them. We all know we should love one another, but we must put the commandment into a daily practice. We cannot love God whom we have not seen unless we love others who we have seen. The commandment to love one another bears repeating again and again so that we don't miss the blessings of God. What does it mean to love one another? And it says in verse 6, and this is love that we walk according to his commandments. See, love means living according to God's commands. John define, defines a believer's love in terms of obedience to God. A believer who truly seeks God's best for his brothers and sisters can only do so by obeying what God has commanded him to do. Believers who are walking in truth, that is living in response to what God has revealed, love each other. True love for God and others is revealed by our obedience to God's commands. Paul writes to the people of Philippi in Philippians chapter 2, verse 8, And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Jesus was obedient to the very end. Words like love, grace, mercy, sacrifice would not be enough. See, Jesus took action. And in order to take action, there needed to be obedience. His obedience to his Father. God commands us to love one another, for to love is to be obedient to those commands. Jesus was obedient to his Father. He loved us unlike any other. We are to become Christ-like. We are to imitate Christ. We are to become more like him, to be obedient, to love one another. To be, to be obedient to the commands of God. To love each other. To walk in truth. To walk in love. See, walking in truth and love are to always go hand in hand. One can't stand alone without the other. When we hold to the truth but do so without love, it will breed harshness. Truth without love makes a person harsh. When we love but neglect the truth, it produces compromise. The person who loves without truth makes a person dangerous for it will produce problems to take root in their life. John says this, 
John says, I commend you for walking in truth. And I command you to walk in love. May God help us always to do both faithfully. That as a church, that we walk in truth, that we walk in love, that we show to others what a true home of Christ is. Let us pray. Lord, uh, many of us that are listening, that are here, I'm pretty sure many of us have been brought, we've been brought up in the church. We've been told what is right and what is wrong. We've been told to read your word, to study your word, to pray to you. But it seems like a lot of times we wrestle with our time with you and with the world. And more so, the, the world seems to win over. I pray, Father, that, that we will go back to the point, to the moment in time when we accepted you as our Savior, where we had this unbelievable feeling, incredible feeling of release, feeling of your love and your grace, your peace, your mercy. I pray that we will be able to hold on to that feeling and continue to want to have that feeling, continuing to grow in that feeling. I pray that we'll be able to to do so by walking in truth, to walk in love, but that we become obedient to your word, to your commands. And that we start from the basics. To simply get into your word, to study it, to feed ourselves, and to spend time with you by talking to you, praying to you, getting to know you, at a deeper level. I pray, Father, that all of us will be able to spend more time with you, to know that you are the truth, but to know deeper what is truth, and that it will help us to walk in truth and to walk in love. For you loved us, for you are the way, the truth, and the life. So thank you for this time. Thank you for this passage. And I pray, Father, that you'll help us to truly become a home of Christ. Your sons, they will pray. Amen.